Alright, so we're back for another round on that. Mercedes. So let's get to it. We ran into a whole new set of problems here. I put the pump and filter and everything back on the car and um, now it's not pumping any fuel. Okay, so fuel pump wasn't working. Do a pressure test on this thing. Alright, so here's the deal. Pulled the pump. It wasn't working on the car. It wasn't sucking through the tank. Tank had plenty of gas. Uh, bench tested it, put it in a little container, and uh, first I just ran the pump, and it pumped out at uh, 55 psi. Good pressure, held a steady pressure, uh, nice and solid needle. Didn't vary any. Then ran it through the filter, and also used this uh, damper. Make sure this didn't have an air leak. And it's still still pumping great, right around 55 psi. A uh, nice quiet pump. So uh, apparently there's an obstruction. Maybe the tank's dirty. The filter inside the tank. So now what I'm going to end up doing is uh, I'll blow out the fuel lines. But first. I want to go ahead, so we got our pressure gauge hooked up to between the fuel rails and uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the pump up here, actually I'm going to put it over here somewhere where it's out of the way, I'm going to run it direct into the fuel line and then uh, have constant 12 volts to it with the battery once we uh, uh, get the car started or see if it's pumping through here and adjust the regulator if it's even adjustable I might have to replace that and then uh, if everything checks out try to start it and see if it runs with the pump up here if it does then I have an obstruction in the fuel line or a kink or something from here to the tank or uh, or possibly the the uh, strainer inside the tank is is uh, clogged so pretty much a process elimination here and uh, we'll go from here all right let's check some fuel pressure uh. Uh. battery claims installed check fuel line installed check compression tester installed check <laughs> Well, the pressure's going up slowly. Look at that, it's right at 30. So that thing's set right. Yeah, that's working. Yep, so we have 30 pounds from the regulator. Wow, I eyeballed that thing. That was blind luck. Uh, okay. Oh shit, that's right on 30. Alright. Now what do we do? Let's try to start it. So these are the trigger points, and this is the most expensive set of points that you've ever seen in your life. Uh, Mercedes and and uh, some aftermarket one about a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars just for this little this little deal here so uh, I know there is a tool that a guy named Norbert in Germany makes to adjust these and uh, that would probably be the best bet but I'm pretty sure these things are whacked. I kind of did a degree test on here to see when they were opening, marking the distributor with different colors for the different points, and they they don't they don't open when they're supposed to. So I'm pretty sure the gap on these contacts here is uh, is way off. So I think that's about where we stand with this. So either uh, need to order the tool or take a guess adjusting these. 
maybe uh, you know, even them out with a micrometer or a dial indicator, or whatever, and uh, see if we can get it close. If not, then I don't know. Then I guess I have to order a tool. Okay, here's another thing I've been goofing off on. Went ahead and pulled the tank, replaced this uh, foam seal and the lines which were completely disintegrated check the inside of the tank looks good yeah just i don't know just extra insurance might as well since this thing's been taken apart with the lines and everything check for dirt and then also been goofing off on this pulled all the injectors uh, waiting on these o-rings or these, uh, what do we call them, the uh, picket seals or something like that. Pickle seals, I don't know. Waiting for those to, or pickle caps, yeah. <laughs> Waiting for those to come in, and then uh, I replace all these lines. I'm going to blow the system out. Make sure there's no crud in there, debris, anything clogging. Uh, still have an issue of it not running. I don't know. This is a difficult one to figure out. I went ahead and checked the TPS. Uh, well, he's back there vacuuming the trunk out now. We're going to get ready to put the tank back in. And another thing I tried was went ahead and uh, mounted the fuel pump up here and you know ran it direct to 12 volts. Uh, hooked it up to the line here and it pumped great. Uh, set the regular pressure at 30 psi um, So it has plenty of pressure to the injectors, but I think I don't know either it wasn't getting any Spark or not enough spark or the injectors aren't firing So I went ahead and replaced the, the, all the spark plugs. They actually have the wrong ones in there From what I gather of looking at the part number they were for like an 280 SCL SL whatever and just change those all over to the, uh, the 4.5 liter. And I'm still curious about these. I was leaning towards trigger points, but everything, all the tests I do, they check out. Um, even adjusted them. Everything looks good. Another thing I wanted to check was uh, whatever the ballast resistors and. Uh, this ground set right here looks a little corroded and I did I took a multimeter and you know put the ground and then uh, you know on the screw and on the connectors and they they set the multimeter off so I don't know just clean those just in case and then the injector grounds and I believe the ECU I cleaned up that connection Another thing I wanted to check, which I haven't tested out yet, was the changeover valve. Uh, that goes to the distributor. I'm not sure. If, I think this is the... I think red would be advanced and yellow would be retard. So I believe this is the retard, which is hooked up to the mid plate. Um, there is this here, which they have blocked off, which has me thinking that this might have had both the red and the yellow for advance and retard I'm not sure but the changeover only has two plugs so I need to look into that and see what's up with that um. all right so this is uh, I guess like the uh, fuel tank pressure you know for the uh, build up of the pressure in the tank I ended up pulling this thing off and it ended up being clogged Hopefully this was the reason, because I noticed when you put the gas cap on, the fuel tank would lose its ability to deliver fuel because there was just too much vacuum inside the tank. Uh, I figured it might have been this. This is actually bolted up underneath the uh, driver's side rear floor pan. Uh, filter was toast on it, which that ended up being the filter. So what I ended up doing is cutting... Uh, <laughs> green scotch pad which was pretty much the same material 
I cut the circle and then ended up just stuffing it in there and making it nice and flat and bam I mean, it looks looks good and I think it'll make a decent uh, filter so I believe this vents the uh, excess pressure out, out through here into the atmosphere and this I guess when there's too much pressure this valve right here sends the fuel back into the tank I believe or the pressure I, I'm not sure it just bypasses it but uh, that's what I'm filling around with now so I'm getting ready to put new hoses on it because these are in pretty rough shape so I'm just going to use some high pressure fuel injection hose and uh, get that back together all right so get ready to head out for the day progress today was got all the fuel lines replaced with high pressure hose blew out all the fuel lines uh, still have to replace the fuel line to the leaders and one on the fuel rail uh, so the uh, so that or the valve underneath there for the tank vent that's all clean reinstalled and then uh, got the fuel tank back in got the back plate back on can't really see the lighting but uh, a mat in here but yeah all well, that's all that's back together and uh, might need to do something around this seal the seal feels a little a little loose but yep that's that was today's thing so oh yeah and the uh, little first aid kit behind the seats back in also video we did the uh, fuel tank that's all done so let's go under here all right so I got the fuel pump most of the way hook back up um, these new mounts right here are from Mercedes they were like two bucks a piece went ahead and got those the other ones were pretty rotted and dried up and uh, had to modify them a little bit. The holes need to be drilled. I think it was three sixteenths or something like that. Come on, focus. So basically, this thing's got all new hoses now, all new clamps. Snow. Get under here. Still need to hook up the uh, damper line, and then. Up in here, right there's the tank outlet that takes like a gigantic 42 millimeter socket or something like that. But I got lucky with the 19 millimeter when I cranked on the little one, it loosened up the big one, so pulled the strainer out of the tank and it wasn't too bad, but worth cleaning. Oh, yeah, I gotta hook these mounts up too. So, uh, kind of hard to hold the phone and do this at the same time, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up and then, uh from there, I need to put the injectors back in. All right, we're all hooked up. Up here. Pull the wiring. All right, let's get to uh, let's get to these fuel injectors. All right, so we have an injector. This one's actually a new one. All the other ones are older ones. Uh, last Brainiac to put this together. When you put the injector in, didn't put the uh, a circlip on there so went ahead and picked one up at Mercedes so we're gonna put that on and uh, went ahead and picked up all the uh, uh, injector seals whatever you want to call them they're actually called uh, uh, 
pink, oh, what the hell, pinko seal, pinko tips, tops, whatever, anyway, injector seals that goes up, and then of course this, so we're going to go ahead and pop this on, went and tested all the injectors with a multimeter, they all test out good, and then uh, put three volts to them, and uh, open them all up, they all uh, seemed to open, and then went ahead and and uh, cleaned them out and kept them open and blew through them and blew all the crap out. It was actually, these actually were pretty damn dirty. Uh, so, go ahead and put that back together. And then get all these things back in and try to fire up. Alright, just to give you an idea of why I replaced these. Here's an original that was on there. It was literally, it's toast. And then the guy that put that injector in. Must have put it on the injector first and then stuffed it in there and it's all crooked. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if this does it any justice, but this thing was in there literally like cocked in there like this. And uh, I know that had to be a vacuum leak. So, anyway, all new ones. Let's get them in. Alright, here's our injector holes. Just vacuumed everything out and cleaned it. Clean it one more time so I don't get any dirt down in there. In order, just for info, this bolt right here for the back injector on the driver's side, this bar right here, this goes across and up over it. There's no way to really get to the bolt easily. Uh, just ended up pulling that throttle cable or the throttle bar off, put it over to the side. I made it a hell of a lot easier to get off, so I ended up using some of this throttle cleaner. seals in. Alright, so we have all the injectors hooked back up. Easiest thing I found to do was put the O-rings in, slide each injector in, and then put the rail on. It works. And the other thing I was looking up in my service manual is under the dash, right here by the blower. There is this, which is a fuel injection relay. So, pull this thing out. And these pins, if you can see, are one goes to an empty hole, and then the other one down there in the bottom, right there, is reversed from my relay. Any, right? No, we're good. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, so far. <clears throat> Okay, so I kind of ended a little abruptly and then now I'm popping right back in. The engine got it started, it still runs rough, and 
now the alternator isn't charging so uh, I had to do some checking of wiring and everything all the pin numbers and looking through the uh, wiring manual and everything but this right here goes to the voltage regulator which in turn goes to the alternator so I have the alternator pulled off waiting for a new one to come in so this wire ended up being burnt or corroded from the battery tray here uh, right around in here somewhere and uh, I mean, it took me forever to find it too I mean this wiring harness goes all the way up into the firewall and then it goes up into the dash for the warning lights and on these cars if your warning bulb blows out for your charging light or this wire it's a blue wire uh, ends up burning out or you get a bad connection your alternator won't charge so anyway get ready to check it so I got it in pin it should be buzzing on pin number eight Pulling the cockpit out of here. We have our main harness. The cluster, so pin number eight. Which is there. And we are beeping and we have power. So now we should be good. So here we have the oil pressure line, pressure speedometer, ignition. So this cluster here is actually easier to get out than I was thinking. Basically you just grab it here and here and just pull out, wiggle and it pops right out. It has a uh, rubber seal on the cluster bezel itself. It seals, there isn't a screw that holds it in. So it was pretty simple. So I'm going to get this back together and I'm going to pop the battery in here and do the key stuff and see if I have power where I need to have power. Here's our cluster. Oh yeah, and this uh, another problem that I was having with this car. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the lights weren't working inside the uh, instrument cluster so I pulled this, uh, this is the uh, dimmer switch I ended up pulling this thing out and it's pretty much toast inside it just fell apart so this piece is like a hundred bucks just for this little dimmer switch so basically what I did is I just bypassed the two terminals now the, uh, the lights will come on for the instrumentation but you won't be able to dim them but you know what not a big deal at least not for me cleaned up all these terminals Pulled the circuit board. I checked the circuit board first before I went through the wiring. So, uh, anyway, that's that. And here's this rubber seal that seals it. Yep, 150,000. So, here's the light that did not want to come on. Not when you keep the ignition on, not when. We, uh, we're getting ready to start it, not even when the alternator was bad. Alright, so I had to hook the alternator back up real quick. That way I can finish off the circuit. Uh, let's go check to see if this light comes on. I'll let the cockpit partially out just in case it doesn't. Time you can't really see, but there they are. So, instrument lights work also now. Yay! All right. So until the alternator comes in, uh, I'm going to be on a hold. So I'll probably just end up posting what I have with these videos, and then uh, pick back up after the alternator comes in. Try to get it started again. See if anything makes any difference, or if I'm still. Still be spending hours and hours 
trying to figure this thing out because this is a very confusing, well, maybe not confusing, but a very time consuming fix on this car so far. Seems to be one problem after the one problem after the other. So, alright, till next time.